There are many things about yoga that seem intimidating, but one thing that's a barrier for many people is the sitting positions. You know, the stereotypical yoga sitting posture is sitting on the floor with the legs folded in like a pretzel. And this is really inaccessible for a wide range of people for a number of reasons. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make sitting postures work well for your unique body. My name is Zelinda and I specialize in teaching yoga so that people with all kinds of bodies can participate and benefit. Let's get started. We'll start from the most accessible type of sitting position and then we'll gradually work toward more physically challenging positions. So the first thing that I want to introduce is actually sitting on a chair and it's not something that many people think of but it's perfectly fine to use a chair for sitting in your yoga practice. When we're using a chair what we want to do is sit up toward the front edge of the chair you will set your feet down about hip width apart with your ankles under your knees. And then once you have this foundation set up, you'll want to lengthen your spine and relax your shoulders. The reason that I start with this posture is so that I can introduce the concept of why we want to sit with good posture, why we want to be able to sit with the spine totally lengthened like this. Breathing is arguably the most important aspect of the, of the yoga practice. And in order to breathe well, we need to be able to extend the spine so that the lungs and the ribs have space to expand when you inhale and contract when you exhale. When you sit in a posture that is less than ideal for you, typically you end up slouching in some kind of way. And when we're slouched, it's not possible to expand the lungs and the ribs as well as when you're sitting upright. So tall sitting position, sitting on a chair is a great choice for very many people. You might choose to do this at the beginning of your yoga practice or at the end of the yoga practice, especially during times when you're specifically focusing on breathing. And you can also use the chair for actual yoga postures. So say that your teacher is asking you to sit on the floor with your legs crossed and um, inhale and bring your arms up. You can definitely do that from the sitting position on the chair. You can inhale, extend your arms up, exhale down. You can also do different things like twist to one side. Just giving you some ideas about how you can start to integrate the chair into your yoga practice if sitting on the floor isn't a good option for you. Another thing that you can do while sitting on a chair is work on seated forward folds. So you probably have seen in a class before where the teacher is asking you to sit on the floor, extend one or both legs forward and fold forward. If that's not working for your body, sit on your chair and you can put one foot up onto a little stack of blocks, maybe two or perhaps three. Make sure that you're keeping the other foot down on the floor for stability, just so that you don't lose your balance and fall off of your chair. But you keep the one foot down and then you know fold forward in this way. It's a really nice way to stretch out the back of your leg and also your back. All right, after you finish the one side, you can take time to do the second side. And of course, you can do another round if you'd like. Sitting can also be a great alternative to kneeling. So if you're familiar with the pose called cat and cow, normally that's done on hands and knees if that's not comfortable for your knees or not comfortable for your wrists or for any reason you don't want to be you know, on hands and knees, it's not comfortable for you. You can certainly do that sitting on a chair. So again, you sit up toward the front of your chair, lengthen your spine, set up your foundation, and then bring your hands onto your knees and you can Inhale and lift your chest up. It's a gentle back bend or back arch. And then exhale, round your spine toward the back of the chair while relaxing your shoulders down. On inhale, you're lifting your chest up. And on exhale, you're rounding your spine. So for this one, we get all the benefits of great spine movement without 
the hazards of kneeling or um, putting weight on your wrists. Next, let's talk about something that's a little bit more challenging and that's sitting down onto a prop, like a bolster. So this is a bolster here. It is a kind of dense kind of pillow. You can find them on Amazon. You might find them at your local yoga studio. Um, what we do for sitting with a bolster is we set it down and then sit on it with your bottom, but let your legs be in front. All right, and there we go. And you can just kind of wiggle into place. Legs can be in front. So if it's comfortable for you to cross your ankles and it's comfortable for your knees to bend this amount, this might be a good sitting option for you. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not working for your ankles, maybe it's not working for your knees. So I'm gonna give you another option here. You can introduce blocks into your sitting position. So these are foam, but they also come in bamboo. You can find them made of different materials and you can put these blocks under your knees. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can actually set down one of the flat sides and rest your knees on top. Or if that's not comfortable, you can set down one edge of the block so that you have a flat side touching your legs. And this is good for people who have, oh, my blocks are sliding, but you get the idea. This is good for people who have a little more tightness in their hips or in their knees or even in their ankles. You can just try this out and see if this makes your sitting um, position feel more comfortable. And then another thing you can do if crossing your legs is not a good option is you can actually extend your legs out. It is perfectly fine. There is no rule that says that the legs need to be crossed when you're sitting in yoga. And then just like how we were able to do lots of different yoga poses while we were sitting on the chair, we can also do many kinds of yoga practice while sitting on the bolster. So, you know, again, you can inhale, bring your arms up. You might work on some side bending. You can do twists here. You can do forward folds. You can do your cat and cow. Um, and you can also work on extending the legs forward and going into a forward fold uh, with both legs extended or one leg extended. Um, this is a, you know, just really versatile um, prop or a versatile sitting position that you can use as an alternative to sitting down on the floor. Finally, let's talk about what you should do if you go to a yoga class and there are no props available and your teacher is teaching postures that require sitting on the floor. So the first thing to note is that you can certainly extend your legs out if sitting cross-legged is not an option for you. You can sit with your legs extended forward and a little bit out toward the sides. You could sit with your legs together and forward you could bend your knees a little bit. You can do, really, you can always do anything that works well for your body. Um, another thing that I want to make sure to mention is that sitting upright is always more challenging than leaning back. So if you find that you're trying to sit upright and it's just really not working for you, go ahead and lean back into your hands, that is fine. In fact, if you have a wall close by, you can even lean onto the wall and you can work on your yoga practice this way. From here, you can extend your arms up. You can work on a little bit of a twist. You can work on forward folding with one or both legs extended. Extending the legs out is a perfectly good option. All right, so I think we've been through quite a lot of um, options. We've been through sitting on the chair, um, sitting on a bolster, sitting on the floor. And the main thing that I want to emphasize here is that there's no one right way to sit in yoga. We have the concept of ahimsa in yoga philosophy. Ahimsa means non-harm. And that means that when we're doing the yoga practice, we should not be harming our bodies or even our minds. We shouldn't be stressing ourselves out or you know, scolding ourselves for not being able to move our bodies into certain positions. And that's why, you know, I'd like to propose all these options that you can try out so that you can practice yoga in a way that works well for your body. The last thing that I'd like to mention is just to bring some awareness to the effect of the media on our perception of what yoga is supposed to look like. So when we see people doing yoga on an infomercial, uh, on a TV show or a movie or on 
YouTube or, you know, even on the cover of a magazine, we see people folding their bodies. It looks effortless and they're folding their bodies into like tight pretzel shapes. And we get the idea because we see it so frequently that that's how we're supposed to practice yoga. But we have to remember that that is media. It's like a version of fantasy. And in reality, people have all kinds of bodies and we can practice yoga in all kinds of ways. So please don't hesitate to be creative and figure out how to make the yoga practice work well for your body. Remember the concept of ahimsa and practicing in a way that's not causing harm, a way that's kind for your body and for your mind. And if you have any questions at any time about how to make a specific yoga posture work well for your body, send me a note. I'm here. I'm here to help. You can send me a note in the comments. I read those usually at least once a week. Um, or if it's something that's more personal in nature and you don't want to post about it publicly, you're also welcome to send me an email. All right. I think that's it for today. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and then click the notification bell so that YouTube will let you know each time I upload a new video. If you're interested in supporting my work, please consider becoming a patron. I'll put the link to my Patreon page in the description box. And finally, if you're interested in live workshops and live events that I put on throughout the year, please follow me on Instagram. I'll see you there.